Hello and welcome to Learning Redstone Part 7. In this part I want to talk to you about Skulk Sensors and Calibrated Skulk Sensors. So since the Calibrated Skulk Sensors are not in the game yet, this video was recorded before 1.20, I'm playing this in the snapshot 23W14A. So without further ado, let's head straight into it. First of all, how do we even get a Skulk Sensor or a Calibrated Skulk Sensor? So the Skulk Sensor got added with the Deep Dark Biome. There you can find them and you need a tool with Silk Touch to gather them. The best tool for that is the hoe, but any tool will work. Once you get the Skulk Sensor, you can craft up a Calibrated Skulk Sensor with the update 1.20. So for that, you need a Skulk Sensor in the middle and surround it with three Amethyst Shards. And then you will get one of these dandy handy boys. So it is pretty much hearing if anything happens in this area around it. So the area is marked here with the uh, smooth stone. It is eight blocks apart from the Skulk Sensor. So this is the eighth block. But the whole area covered here the Skulk Sensor will hear out for movement or any sounds. I will go into that a little bit later. So depending on how close you are making a sound, we get a different redstone signal. So everything that is pretty much right next to this sensor will give out a signal strength of 14. But the further out you go, the less the redstone signal will be. So in this case, 14 and every block out will reduce it by 2 until we end up at the 8th block that is only a signal of 1. But signal strengths between are also possible, like here. So 2 blocks over and 1 block in that direction will give a signal strength of 11. Like this. So pretty much any signal strength is possible, you just have to go far away from the Skulk Sensor. Now we know the Skulk Sensor is actually a power source of some kind, but where will it power the redstone around it? So this will work, any block directly pointing into or from the Skulk Sensor, but also the block below will power it. So this would also work. With the 1.20 update, also, this variant will work. So the Skulk Sensor will strong power the block it's sitting on and by that powering the redstone around it. Something like that with the Skulk Sensor um, below the redstone dust will not work. It will not power this redstone. So you have to choose one of these three options to make use of the Skulk Sensor. You can make use of wool blocks, any color will work, it doesn't have to be white, to block the hearing radius of the Skulk Sensor. So anything happening here, the Skulk Sensor can't hear. Here he will hear it. So by that you can regulate from which direction the Skulk Sensor should hear the voices you make or where you want him to hear in which direction. The Skulk Sensor cannot be moved by pistons in any way, shape or form. So you can't drag it with a uh, sticky piston, you can't push it with a regular piston and you also can't drag it with a uh, slime block or a honey block. So it is not movable for us at all rather than picking it up with this touch tool and replacing it on another place. If you are not a big fan of your Skulk sensors making all these sounds you are able to silence the Skulk Sensors by waterlogging them. So as you can see, these Skulk Sensors still light up a little bit when I'm moving around here. That means they pick up a signal, but they don't, won't make any sounds when they are waterlogged. So by that, you can silence your Skulk Sensors for your redstone contraptions. Even though all of this is pretty cool, the Skulk Sensor has even a little bit more to it. So when we use in comparator in combination with the Skulk Sensor, we can point out which voice we made and get a different signal strength depending on that. 
So for instance, when I now stop my flying and land, we will get a redstone signal of 2. While when we move, we only get a signal of 1. And this is different for different interactions. So if I now move this item in the item frame, we get a signal strength 11. Oh, yeah, that's not how it works. And if we use, for instance, the goat horn, we get a signal strength of 3. So different interactions will give us a different signal strength output. And here we have a little list of all the things that happen. Now, before 1.20, it is a little bit different. Uh, and with 1.20, they made some changes. So bear with me here a little bit. So for a signal strength of 1, until the patch 1.20, we only can use this by steps. And after or with 1.20, steps, swimming or flapping from like bats will work. To get a signal strength of 2, until 1.20, there's flap or item interact finish. Now, what does that mean? That is when a player drags in a um, fishing pole rod or like uh, stops using a shield, something like that. So if you interact with an item and finish it or stop it. And with 1.20 this gets changed to projectile land, hit ground or splash. As you saw, I landed and made a signal strength of 2. So I won't go over this in all of the detail and read everything out. But I will go through this and let you read this since you now get the general idea. This will show you the signal strength you get until 1.20 and with 1.20 is the change, depending on when you are watching this video. Everything I told you so far about the Skulk Sensor is also true for the Calibrated Skulk Sensor. But where's the difference then? Let's talk about that. As you can see, the Calibrated Skulk Sensor has one side where this amethyst color will run down the block. And that is actually an input only. So you won't get any output on this side. But why is there an input into this? So. We can calibrate this Skulk sensor like the name suggested. I here have a lectern where I can set up a different signal strength reading out with the comparator. So now it's on 13. And with this input of 13 for the calibrated Skulk sensor, we will only get an output from the calibrated Skulk sensor when we make a sound that hits the signal strength 13. So 13, if we go back here real quick, would be block place or fluid place, since we are here in a 1.20 patch. So if I now place a block, we get an output of 13 on by both ends. But if I place the block right onto the sensor, I will get a signal of 15 and one of 13 here. That is the case because I now placed it closer and it works like the Skulk sensor. So if you get a um, normal output, like the further I go away, the less output we get on a regular output. But the output with the comparator will always be the same like the input on the input one. So now that the Skulk sensor is calibrated with the redstone signal of 13, we can make different sounds and it will not activate unless we place a block, even 
destroying the block will not activate it. Or the dispenser failing or me interacting with the button. Nothing of that interacts with the skulk sensor when he is set to 13. So with that we can set up a skulk sensor that only listens to that sound that we want him to hear. And I think that's a pretty handy thing. The other big difference between the regular skulk sensor and the calibrated skulk sensor is that the calibrated skulk sensor actually has a hearing radius of 16 blocks to each side. So while the skulk sensor only has 8 blocks to each side, the calibrated one will hear everything inside this big radius of actually 16 here, then the calibrated skulk sensor and 16 here. So that's a pretty big area where you can hear any sound we make. As you just saw, when I land here I make a sound and this blue wave travels to the skulk sensor activating it. That is when the when that wave comes to the skulk sensor it will give out its output. So it always has a little bit delay depending on how far we are away. With 1.20 we also get the new feature for the amethyst block that he can send out vibrations to the next skulk sensor. By that we can chain skulk chain skulk sensors um, like this. So skulk sensor and amethyst block and that one will send the signal to the next skulk sensor, amethyst block and this one will pick up the signal. It will give out the regular um, redstone signal that we got from like this shard depending on how far the block is away or even save the sound if we use a comparator for the output. So when I now place a block here, the redstone lamp will shortly after turn on and on the end here of the comparator, we will see a signal strength of 13. So let's try this out. 13 and the lamp is on since the skulk sensor powers the blocks around him. So if I now break this block, the signal, the, the signal will also get sent over but we only get a signal strength of 12 over there. Since breaking a block gives out a different output than placing a block. So now we could use this function also with the calibrated skulk sensor to have um, one line to transport different redstone signals. So this can be pretty cool but we have to see what the people will come up with. And that should be everything about the skulk sensor and the calibrated skulk sensor. If I have missed anything or you want to know anything in special, let me know down in the comments below. And if you've learned something, please consider giving this video a like and maybe even consider subscribing if you haven't already. So far, until next time, bye bye!